posterior lateral root repair through lateral tunnel and anterior cruciate ligament revision. How to avoid tunnel overlapping. The authors declare no conflict of interest. In this procedure, we perform a lateral tunnel to repair the posterior lateral root, followed by a standard ACL reconstruction and then lateral extraarticular tenodesis. Preoperative clinical examination shows a positive Lachman test, anterior drawer test, and a pivot shift test. Preoperative MRI shows lateral meniscal extrusion and the ghost sign, which is an indirect sign of a lateral posterior horn tear. The CT scan shows significant tibial tunnel widening, which indicates a high risk of tunnel overlapping when performing the tunnel required for the root repair. We start by harvesting the patellar tendon bone graft. Initial arthroscopic inspection shows a tear of the ACL graft that was removed using a biter and a shaver. No lesions of the medial meniscus were observed. With the leg in a figure of 4 position, the lateral compartment is inspected and a type 2 complete tear of the posterior root of the lateral meniscus was observed. The stability of the meniscus was checked and the complete liftoff of the meniscal root from the tibial plateau can be seen. The footprint of the posterior horn is refreshed and debrided by the arthroscopic shaver to promote healing. The suture for the posterior root is performed using a suture passing device into the joint from the anteromedial portal loaded with a number 2 fiber wire suture. The first suture is placed and the two free ends of the suture are passed into its loop in order to create a cinch configuration stitch. A second suture is applied using the same technique laterally to the previous suture. With the knee flexed at 90 degrees and the hip in neutral rotation, a small lateral incision is performed and the anterior fibers of the tibialis anterior are elevated from the bone using a cob. The tibial cannula is inserted through the incision. The tibial guide is used to create a tibial tunnel for the suture pullout and is introduced into the joint from the anterior medial portal. The tibial guide is positioned on the center of the root footprint and the 2.4K wire is introduced through the guide from the anterolateral part of the proximal tibia. The tunnel is created by passing a 4.5 mm reamer over the K wire. The K wire is removed and the ream is used as a guide to introduce a metal loop suture relay into the joint to be retrieved from the anteromedial portal. A loop grasper is used to untangle the sutures, and then the free ends of the four sutures are retrieved from the anteromedial portal. The free ends of the sutures are carried on the loop of the metal wire relay and then pulled into the tibial tunnel through the carrier wire. Thus, the posterior root is repositioned. Multiple knots are then applied to the suture over a round button of 11 mm placed against the lateral tibial cortex. The tibial tunnel for ACL revision is performed in the standard way using progressive reamers over a K wire. The remnant of the graft is debrided inside the tibial tunnel. The tibial tunnel is inspected to confirm complete graft removal and the absence of convergence with the lateral root tunnel. The femoral tunnel is created using an outside-in technique with progressive reamers and the remnant of the graft inside the tunnel is removed using a shaver. A shuttle is introduced into the femoral tunnel and retrieved from the tibial side. The graft is then pulled into the joint from the tibial tunnel until the bone block is completely seated in the tibial tunnel. The graft is fixed onto the tibia using a metal screw and onto the femur using an interference screw. Additional tibial fixation can be performed by tying the metal wire carried on the bone plug to a monocortical screw which acts as a post. And here are the post-operative x-rays.